guys, G Show here with Blindsided Sports covering the Buffalo Bills. And I think with the draft right around the corner, we have to take a step back and count our blessings and be thankful that we have Brandon Bean running the show rather than Doug Whaley. And here's why. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm, I'm usually pretty positive. I, I, I want to look forward to the draft here. But I think it's time to reflect a little bit. And when you look at the moves that Brandon Bean has made compared to what Doug Whaley did, no comparison. Whaley seemed to forget about the cap. He had no regard for the salary cap. He, he turned it into a shit show. So not only is Brandon Bean, is he trying to turn this team around and bring in the, the, the type of players we're looking for while also being high-quality guys, but he's also working with the salary cap and making sure that we have room in the years going forward okay, to make big signings and to re-sign our guys that develop inside the franchise. It's ginormous, a ginormous difference between Bean and Whaley. And we were talking on the live show the other night about that 2014 draft. And I want to bring it up here because I want you, we have to talk about the importance of each draft. One draft, one move, one bad pick, one bad trade can set a franchise back, especially when you're talking first and second rounds. And Whaley definitely set the franchise back. He was, we talked about it, I was talking with, with the guys who were watching the live show the other night. And somebody brought up a great point that Whaley is a great pro scout. He can look at the guys that are in the league and decide, okay, this guy this guy would fit good in our system and whatnot. I'm bashing Whaley totally on the general manager. He just he didn't have the juice when it came to college scouting, and he was usually on the losing end of, of his deals. When he would make a trade, when he would make a deal, he's usually on the losing end for the most part. Yeah, we traded Kiko for Shady. Shady gave us a couple solid years, but Kiko's still a really good linebacker in the NFL, guys. We, I mean, as much as we don't like him now, and he's kind of a motherfucker, I miss him. I miss him. He was great. I loved the guy when he was on our squad. So that one's debatable. But when it comes to that 2014 draft, Whaley set the franchise back and got lambasted. He got absolutely roasted. When you give up as much stock as he did when he traded up to that four spot to get our guy, Sammy Watkins, okay, when you give up that much stock and you don't hit, it's devastating. I get so rattled when we talk about this because it is catastrophic. It's it's way worse than drafting Terrell Troop right before Rob Gronkowski. Way worse, okay? I gotta, I'm got i going to pull up a list here so I can tell you guys who we missed out on, okay? The Bills were in the ninth spot in the 2014 draft. They move up to number four in exchange. They swap picks with Cleveland, and they give up their first and, I believe, their fourth-round selections, okay? Yeah, their fourth-round selection, okay? Now, the Bills trade up, right? They get Sammy Watkins. If they traded up, they could have. You know who went right after Sammy? Most of you guys know. Khalil Mack, franchise-changing player, Okay? We could have skipped over Mac. Pro Bowler, Jake Matthews, at one to six. Number seven, Pro Bowler, Mike Evans. Significantly better wide receiver and a better career, less injury than Sammy Watkins. Right there, those three players, we could have traded up and drafted any one of those players. But the, that's not even that devastating. The fact that we let Cleo Mack go is, is pretty messed up. But if we would have stayed in our spot at nine, Okay, we stayed in our spot at nine. We could have drafted Anthony Barr, trade back, trade back to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Between our spot at nine and 17, eight Pro Bowlers drafted straight. Eight Pro Bowlers. Anthony Barr, Eric Ebron, Taylor Lewan, Odell Beckham, Aaron Donald, Kyle Fuller, Ryan Shazier, Zach Martin, C.J. Mosley were the players that were drafted after our original spot. Not only could we have kept all that draft stock going into the, this the, this 2014 season and the next season where we lost our first round pick to get Sammy Watkins, we could have traded back, gained more stock, and drafted all and drafted one of these guys. Can you imagine if we traded back? to the 12 to get OD, OBJ, or to the 13 to get Aaron Donald? Can you imagine if we would have made a move like that? That's why we have to be thankful for Brandon Bean, okay? Has he made a couple mistakes here and there? Absolutely. 
anything as catastrophic as this? No. And this is why each draft is so important and why every one of you should be ecstatic about this draft coming up because it's so exciting. There's so much on the line every year, and yeah, they don't really pan out too much. We don't really see what the draft meant for a couple years, but there's stars in this draft. In this 2019 NFL draft, there's stars, okay, and we need to hit them. We need to hit on them, and I have full faith, full confidence that Brandon B. will get the job done. Guys, this draft was ridiculous, and Doug Whaley just absolutely blew it. At 21, Ha Clinton Dix. At 23, D4. 25, Jason Verrett, quarterback for uh, the Chargers. Really great quarterback. Pro- These are all pro bowlers. Guys, the second round, okay? Pick 34, Demarcus Lawrence. Pick 36, Derek Carr. I, I know, I'm just saying, he's there. Guys, pick 53, second round, end of the second round. Devontae Adams, 61, Allen Robinson. 63, Jarvis Landry. This is uh, this was a really bad draft for the Buffalo Bills. Okay, okay. So, let's just look at this. Doug Whaley, second round. Okay, we've had the 44th pick, right? In the second round, Adams, Allen Robinson, and Jarvis Landry all went right there in the second round shortly thereafter. Who, who did Doug Whaley draft? Cyrus Quadjal. Cyrus Quadjahal. One of the best draft classes of all time. And we trade up and get Sammy Watkins and Cyrus Quadjahal. In all seriousness, I think we're lucky to have him. I think he's done a great job. And I have so much faith and so much trust in being in this organization that they're going to kill it this draft. There's so many moves to be made. We have so many picks. And there's so many guys that go that come out of the 4th, 5th, 6th round that have the potential to be those sleeper starters or those sleeper all-stars. I think the Bills have done their due diligence. They know that this is everything. Everything is riding on the line right now, this 2019 draft. Guys, be excited. We're just over two weeks away, and uh, this is it. This is this is the icing on the cake that we need for this season to make that playoff run and to, to show that we have the potential to be Super Bowl champions. This is it. Let's go Bills, baby. Show back in the studio. I had to throw this part in here. I'm still rattled about Doug Whaley in 2014. You dumbass. Okay? He said, after he was fired, he goes, yeah, you're welcome for the parting gift. When I traded back and got Tredavious White, you're welcome. I love Tredavious. He's awesome. I'm always going to love him. He's going to be a fan favorite forever. But you traded back the spot where the Chiefs drafted the MVP of the NFL. Whaley, you fucking idiot. He goes, you're welcome, Buffalo. You're welcome for the parting gift. (laughs) We traded back and the Chiefs took the MVP, Patrick Mahomes. I love Tredavious White. I love Josh Allen. But Doug Whaley, you're a fucking idiot.